And after I do that, I'm going to give you um, a, a quick update or maybe a little more background uh, to the article that was in the paper this morning about the um, HRT situations. I suspect there are going to be some questions about that, so I might as well talk about that right up front. And um, so I'll come back to that. But um, spend, you know, you'll remember, obviously, maybe for the folks at home more than anybody than you all, uh, this is our first first Tuesday workshop. So part of it, what we'll, we'll do the recap of the retreat in a minute, but the uh, one of the things that came out of the retreat was this um, sense that you all wanted to get together more frequently and that you wanted to do it in a format or that um, we didn't have a, a business meeting right on the back end. So if we needed to continue some conversation, uh, we didn't have that, uh, that time pressure. Um, so we'll talk through that. Uh, the, the, the recap of the retreat, you got a um, summary from... Um, uh, from us in your Thursday night packet, and so part of it is just to get some reaction to that. Make sure you all you had draft written all over it, but um, if you've got some feedback, some things that you think we either didn't capture or didn't capture accurately, want to get that feedback from me, and then we'll make those changes. Talk to you a little bit then. Um, uh, Bernard uh, did some yeoman's work and took the lead on uh, council rules and procedures, and so you've got that also last week, and so we'll uh, see what kind of conversation uh, we have on that. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about communication, sort of what our takeaway was from, from the retreat, what, what we think you're looking for uh, from the city manager's office. And then um, uh, George Homewood, planning director, will come up and, and do a piece on uh, the uh, loan max uh, special exception. That's the building that, that, that burned down, and now they're, they're coming back in to set their business back up. And we've had some questions about uh, land use and highest and best use of that piece of property. So I wanted you all to have a chance to hear uh, some of George's perspective on that and, and obviously a chance to answer some questions. And candidly, part of what we want to accomplish in these uh, work sessions is the ability to also go and have some of the closed session conversations, again, without time pressure. So we've got uh, uh, three or four um, uh, development items that we uh, want to talk through with you, and, um, and we'll have dinner uh, during that closed session. One of the things I'd say to the public is the intent is to try and, and handle the public activities at the beginning of these work sessions, and then we'll be going to closed session um, as a practical matter. Don't anticipate uh, coming back out and having any, any business. And obviously, we never know that, but at least let's keep on the plan. So, so that's the agenda. Uh, you saw an article this, this morning uh, about HRT, and I'm going to tell you a couple of, particularly for some of you like me that are, that are new in your seats, um, about uh, the relationship with HRT and what a true up is and those sorts of things. I'll talk about that for a second. Uh, sort of explain what the challenge is, how we how we think we got here, and then what we're doing about it. But I got to tell you, this is all pretty fresh for us, so um, uh, please know that. So we have the cities have a what's called a cost allocation agreement uh, with HRT. Uh, you, you all know this, but uh, Norfolk is the, the biggest member. We have the most robust uh, public transit system. We're about 40 percent uh, of the system um, traditionally. There is a, um, you know, we, we sell, um, uh, have a service plan of, of, of the bus routes we want, those sorts of things that, uh, that, that goes to HRT and that we all agree on. We estimate what that's going to cost. And at the end of the fiscal year, uh, that number uh, may or may not, have, in all likelihood, wasn't accurate. And it could be that we owe more money or we owe less money. Uh, and that's a true up uh, in the following year. Uh, what we've learned recently is that that amount for fiscal year 16, and that's an important thing for you. We, we're talking about the, the uh, what started um, July 1, 15, and ended June 30, 16. Uh, and that true up amount again for us is, is $2 million. We have, um, uh, we've not seen anything like that in the last seven or eight years. We had a high true up in 2010 of $469,000. Uh, since then, our average has been $85,000. Sometimes, we, again, we owe money. Sometimes we paid more than we needed to. And so uh, a $2 million uh, amount is literally four or five times the, the largest we've seen. So obviously it presents a challenge for us. Um, uh, Winter Benda, Deputy City Manager, Greg Patrick, uh, Budget Strategic Planning Director, and I met with uh, HRT um, CEO William Harrell and his CFO, Brandon Singleton, this afternoon. And we spent a, a lot of time with them trying trying to understand how we got here and, and where we're going from here. And the, the simple how we got here is some dynamics about uh, what you're seeing across the country, very low gas prices. And uh, with low gas prices, uh, decreases the need for some people to rely on public transit. 
And so um, you've got lower ridership. Uh, lower ridership really impacts the fare box. So you've had an impact on the fare box. We had an increase in paratransit use. Um, and um, uh, they've seen a um, significant amount of vacancies, particularly in the bus drivers. And so in having to fill for those vacancies, uh, require them to pay the drivers that they do have a significant amount of overtime. So a decreased fare box, paratransit increases, overtime increases led to this situation. Um, uh, but it creates, obviously, a real challenge for us. The reason I emphasize the, um, the fiscal year date is uh, we are now March of 17. So we are nine months into the next fiscal year. And... Um, uh, we don't have, I can't give you an answer of where we stand for this current fiscal year. We've asked for that, and, and the candidate, they just don't have that information right now. But there's no reason to believe those dynamics are any different and that we don't have a challenge in this current fiscal year. So I just, uh, I like to say bad news doesn't get better with time. So I just need you to know we got an issue. Uh, we may have a bigger issue than we realize. Um, so then the question you got to ask is what are we doing? So we had the meeting today. Uh, we suggested, and, and I think William, uh, William did agree, uh, we, we think they need to do an audit and really understand what, exactly what happened. Um, I think we are very fortunate to, uh, to have Thelma Drake on our team. Thelma, who worked, uh, was the head of uh, uh, director for the uh, Department of Rail and Public Transit. Uh, we've offered for her to come in and, and help them just really analyze what they've got and where we're going. Um, have had conversations uh, in the last uh, day or two with the, the other major players, which are really Virginia Beach and Newport News. Um, it thought it actually, uh, I think uh, City Manager Dave Hansen had intended to be in the meeting today. They've got a council meeting tonight and, and just couldn't make it. So we're having, but I want you to know we're having a very open dialogue with our, our sister so, cities. So, so Doug, let me just, yeah. just jump in. So the FY15 that ended uh, June 30th of 2016. So FY16. FY16. That's what we're talking about. FY16. There is a projected $2 million shortfall in that budget. Is it our portion? Our portion. So the, two, the, the, the shortfall talking, is five, over five. I'm talking, it, yes. I'm talking Norfolk. For Norfolk, there's a $2 million shortfall. Our ridership is, or our stake in HRT is about 40 percent correct let's look at so okay so we have to deal with that at the same time we are already we started a new budget cycle july 1st correct of 2016 correct that ends june 30th of 2017 correct we're already nine months in correct could we be facing another two million dollar shortfall or greater i think we could we just we candidly we just don't know but the but the the trends that i shared with you low fuel prices lower ridership oh, none of that has gotten better if anything it's it's continued so i i just and, and also alternative you know ride sharing uber and lyft and all. sure sure yeah yes mr strange how is it that they have overtime with ridership low? Well, you, so it's a great question. So think about this. One, you've got a bus, and that bus is going to run whether it's carrying six people or 60 people. So it's, and that's one of the challenges. So they're short-staffed? They are short-staffed. So they're using their existing drivers past their 40-hour general work week to, and that, okay. That's right. Okay. So you're paying time and a half. So, Mr. Riddick, then Dr. Wood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is that transit and rail or just transit? That is transit. I'm, I'm looking over at Winter. That is transit and rail. This is all pretty fresh for us, but okay. it's transit and rail. Yeah, it's my two million is transit and rail, but I think the 40% is just transit. Correct. And the 40% of what? Uh, right of the total of right. HRT. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, when you add light rail, we're mm -hmm. above 40%. Okay. Right, but the, the makeup, the true up, right. is our total. Okay. For, for both. Dr. Wibley, then uh, Mrs. Smeagol. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Which of us is the representative? I am now. So, did, had was. they been telling you all along? I mean, this along? occurred, I, you know, I succeeded Barkley. Right. And so this is the first time hearing of it today as well. So, nothing this fall or this spring no, came nothing. up above? Right, nothing. 
ask you yes. a question. I mean, I'm just curious how this came out of the air, because I, I would have thought they would have had a mid-year audit that had projected. Um, it's one of the things deficit. we talked about today is that um, we need um, more frequent um, earlier sure. indications of these yeah. these issues. So you've had so you've had a history of pretty modest true ups. Obviously, for something like this, is um, it's a it's a real burden on all the communities. But because of our size, because of our fiscal stress, candidly, it's a it's a tough burden on us. Nobody knows y'all know that better than I. I mean, was there any thought? Was there any explanation made on changes they made at the midpoint to? to help with this deficit? No, Have they been talking about anything like that? You know, I, for so how many years have I talked about those buses going up and down? Empty? You know, it's just been so frustrating with the waste. So but the minute side. we try to cut bus routes, then people I don't want bus routes cut. I want bus Efficiency. Cut. You know, so, I want them smaller. Well, they would tell you one of their challenges is the age of their fleet. You know, that they've got their average age is something so, um, 12 years. So, so Mr. Smeagol and Ms. Johnson and Ms. Grace. Um, so one of my questions is why did it take so long for us to find this out? Uh, when did we find out? Is the article in today's paper how we found out? So we, uh, candidly, we still haven't gotten official notification. We started getting indications in uh, uh, mid, I'm looking at mid-January kind of time frame that we were going to have a larger than usual true up, but we still haven't. I, I, I'm not so, exactly so, sure so, where so, the, what precipitated the article. You have a few more. Yeah, no, no, let, let him finish, but you, I think you need to explain the history, the true up, uh, every January uh, over the years, uh, we would get notification thereabout that there is a deficit. And usually it's what? It would be the average 000, for seven years has been $85,000. Yeah, 80, okay. something like 85000 So that's been okay. our true up. All right. Okay. So that, that's something that, of okay. course, you can, you can manage that. But to get a $2 million true up yeah. is unprecedented. Right. Okay, Tommy, go so, ahead with your second question. If I was running an organization and this happened, there would be heads rolling. And there has to be accountability with this. You just can't walk up one day and say the city's owe us $2 million, millions of dollars. One, we're already subsidizing light rail, right? $5 million a year, and roughly. We get a mil $6 million we get a million back in fares. So there's another five million that always goes in the operating light rail. We're not making the fares back on that. And even though I've asked every year since I've been on council for actual ridership numbers, nobody ever provides those to me. Um, but there has to be accountability with this. You just can't, you can't walk in and say that you now have to change your whole budget. So we, had a, we have a little bit of a surplus of $1.7 million. We've just now lost that technically to HRT and not have an explanation of any type of accountability efforts um, or efficiency efforts. You, you mean to tell me that they ran overtime up to $5 million? That this doesn't, it, that, this doesn't sound right. And there needs to be a, a full audit of how this money was being spent and who was responsible for it. And the board and as a council and Mr. Riddick is our representative takes that message back and heads should roll on this. You, you, you can't, the guy's making a, I'm sorry, I, I didn't read the paper this morning. I've had a long day today. So just to read this now and to find out, I did not know about this. But to hear the CFO or the organization say there's no excuses for this. Yeah, there's no excuses. You should be fired. And Harold's butt should be on the line for this as well. I, and, and you can't sit there and say you inherited this. You don't let this stuff, you, you don't let this stuff ride for that long. You mean to tell me the first million that you knew you were going to be short that you didn't alert the cities about this and come to us and tell us we need your assistance now or we're going to have to start cutting bus routes in order to make sure that we do they not operate their budget on a balanced budget every year they can come back to us and say five million this is seven years on council i've never heard of this maybe because the numbers have been so small that we just it is it, it washes out in the end but this is a big amount and and i think we people somebody has to be held accountable for this <coughs> I, didn't they just a, didn't they just do a fair a fair increase? And he, had and yet. HRT yeah. has been here had it yet. a couple times in the There's last two coming. years, and nobody ever okay. has mentioned coming. that okay. you know that this was coming. So maybe this, uh, this let the headlines read.
Councilman Smeagol saying off with their heads. I'm telling you, this is ridiculous. You cannot come to us and 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 do this. Turn around and tell them. And it's particularly when we have schools that need money right now, we have infrastructure needs in the city. You cannot come to us right now at this stage and develop in our budget and tell us that this is happening and not even develop a plan, not even have a plan to address this. All right, Ms. Johnson. Um, my biggest concern is I've been on council for over two and a half years, and this is the first time that I've heard anything relative as far as HRT and what we've been uh, paying the $85,000 um, every year, that particular range. So as we've discussed previously on council, most recently dealing with the retreat and everything, we have to be mindful exactly where our money is going, tracking our money. I don't think, and I, I think that um, our attorney can, can say yay on this. He knows how I feel about this. I don't believe in giving our citizens hard-earned money, just giving it a, a, away. And for you to come and ask me to be responsible for $2 million, that, that is ridiculous. No plan, and I think everybody has said it so thus far, who's um, spoke on this, no plan, no audit, you're saying that we're responsible for, this is the governing body of this city and you don't have the right to come to me and ask me to say that I am responsible for $2 million for something that our fiscal year 2016, which started July 15th through June 6, uh, 2016, correct? And then Mr. Manager, they're saying to you, they cannot provide data as of this point, even now, about any of the situations as far as what we're dealing with, as far as our relationship with them. That's unacceptable for you not to be able to, upon the request of the city manager, our manager, and the governing body, you cannot provide us data. The question then becomes, was their data even collected? Has anybody been tracking what has been occurring with HRT. We've had the discussion again about organizations. We give our money, but what, of our, what are our expectations of the people or organizations that we're giving our money to? No reports, no data, no accountability, no responsibility to this governing body. And it has to stop somewhere. $2 million. So please know, please know, we share your very deep yes. concern. We, we are going to get knee deep. I think we're really fortunate Thel Thelma's here to have the kind of expertise we do Thank have you. in house. Um, at the same time, you know, in some ways, they are we, and, it, and it's, it's our citizens riding these buses and dependent on these buses. And so we got to get the answers for you. But we can Unfortunately, we can't just say, let's go cut services no. because it, it's a, we, we're put in a very tough right. situation. And we've already decided as of Tuesday, that we're not, because of our budget, that we were not going to cut any services. No services would be interrupted concerning our citizens. We said that. We can cut some salaries of some HRT officials. That will take care of it. So we have Andrea and then we have Mark. Um, so I have a question yeah. contractually. Are there any, um, are there any caps to what the true up can be? So, in other words, it cannot be an excess of a certain Yeah, I don't percentage. know the answer to that. I'm not sure if anybody in the room has uh, any. I'm pretty sure the answer is no. And, and, there, and, 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 and there, there is there's, no cap. And there, should there be a cap going forward? Um, the the only money that they have, it, the only source available to them, it is the participating jurisdictions. So if you capped it, it would be an amount of money that they owed without the revenue to pay it. And so I don't know the answer to your question, but it would it would be a problem to solve. So, so speaking in hypotheticals, as lawyers like to do, I mean, could you not have a $10 million true up? Or $20 million? You, you see what I'm saying? I'm trying to be, I, I'm pushing the issue, which you, you is. You could. 
And so if you had a $3 million cap this year and it turned out to be five, there is no source of money to pay the two. Understood. But or, or you may find it. Or it, it. it is an exercise you could undertake. I, I'm not sure that you'd be able to solve it. That uh, perhaps you, you, you could require that, that their funding sources are um, federal, state, and, and local. Um, I believe that the allocation agreement uh, divides the federal, state uh, between the localities based upon their percentage. Uh, you could change that perhaps, and that would be reducing for you the next year the percentage that you'd be getting from the federal or state and requiring future federal and state be used to um, r retire the gap between the actual deficit and the cap deficit, but then you'd be reducing your operating revenues for the fall. It may be solvable, but it, it, it just, you, you, in addition to putting the cap, you would have to conceive of a way to pay the difference between the cap and the actual deficit. Uh, understood, but it seems to me that there should be uh, safeguards in place on a more regular basis, perhaps quarterly, that would allow us and provide the flag that these were going to happen. And I guess it's just such an outlandish we had idea. That, we had that same yeah. conversation. That you have your, a year in, and oh, by the way, I forgot we spent you know, way more than we were expecting to. Yeah, so, and if so you would call that alarm bells, that would not have right. a problem of funding a, a, a deficit. Right. So, Darren, I know you want to finish it. So, Mr. Thomas, and then um, Doug will let you wrap it up. But yeah. we do have Thelma at, representing us on this, and Mr. Riddick. So, Thelma, Mr. Riddick, we uh, expect uh, both of you to come back with probably um, some answers. Well, I, the only thing I can tell you right now is the news is going to be worse. There's going to be a 17% reduction from the federal government. And uh, there is going to be a fair increase of 25 cents that's going to be coming sometime soon. And so with the uh, reduction in federal uh, uh, subsidy, uh, we're going to be uh, paying more as a locality. Yeah. At the same time, Mr. Riddick, um, as, as Doug mentioned, that the cycle budget cycle that mm -hmm. we're in, that right. we're currently in, that ends June uh, 30th, 30th of this year, um, we may be facing yeah. an additional yeah, two you. million or more yeah. uh, because the trends uh, that he alluded to and that he mentioned uh, about uh, what what caused the shortfall, mm -hmm. they have not been addressed. And so, Mr. Thomas. Can I ask one question okay. before you, yeah. just to piggyback off of, may I? So, Bernard, are you saying that HRT has no debt? <laughs> Uh, I, I think they have debt. They have debt. Okay, because you said that. Okay, so they have some debt, but their major sources of income are us, federal, and state government. Yes. Right, right. That new bill, right. Okay. Right. They have debt. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to pile on. I agree with what Tommy was saying about the past, but what's been spent, it's been. I'm going to pile on with what Andrea was going down the road for. I think our representatives need to go back to that board and need to say that it needs to be accountability going forward. Uh, you know, there should be reporting. There should be a cap on what can be spent without coming back and get, getting a vote of each of the councils of each of these uh, uh, localities that are a part of HRT. Um, and I agree that heads should probably roll for allowing that amount of money to get so high and for not notifying us at a time. But you know, looking forward, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again. So I'm calling on what Andrew just started off with and say. Mr. Riddick and, and Ms. Drake, go back there and make sure that we correct this, uh, whether it's the memorandum of understanding or the charter or whatever needs to be amended, make sure that it doesn't happen again. Dr. Just very quickly, you know, the, another problem that we have with this is we have a disproportionate role in the fiscal responsibility, but we have equal representation on the board. So an Isle of Wight committee that is out for how many thousand? just a few, has the same vote that we have. Mm. And we have argued about this, and it has been, I mean, we were boxed out of the appointment for Mr. Harrell. I'm not saying that was an inappropriate hire, but we weren't even at the table for that. So, you know, it begs the question, again, that we're taking the brunt of this, but yet we still only have one vote on a group of, what, 12 communities? And we so should retain I, a different company to run our own buses. Yeah. 
Right. All right. So I'm, if you, I'll, I'll summarize. So, so where we are is, is um, we've asked and they've agreed for the audit. We've asked and they've agreed to get Thelma Drake very involved in trying to, to, to uh, resolve the situation. We have agreed that we will work in partnership with the other communities, particularly Virginia Beach and Newport News, because they really are the, the, the bigger ones. And we've asked and they've agreed to more frequent reporting. With that said, I will sort of leave you with this, and is um, it all of this begs the larger conversation, and you all have hit it. The, the larger conversation is a um, a transit system that is largely dependent upon the general fund of these localities. It, that's a flawed model financially, and the kinds of things that, that you're talking about in terms of voting percentage, and that, that's that's the bigger conversation. That maybe if you say, hey, there's a silver lining here. Uh, and it's a tough one to find, but it, it is, 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 is maybe it forces that larger conversation that, frankly, the General Assembly hadn't given us any help with uh, when they put HR TAC and some of these other things in place and didn't dedicate funding for transit. It kept that burden on us. So, all right. All right. Okay. Andrew, all right. Next. Thank you, sir. I'm going to talk. Got some good news. Oh, yeah. So, so the <laughs> retreat. So, yeah, we had the retreat, and um, we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, uh, We'll start with rules and procedures, and um, you've gotten uh, a couple of things. Well, let me say this. You got your draft summary report that um, Suzanne Purrier put together for us that um, uh, went through the introduction. Let's see. Are you, uh, can you pop me up? Can you pop the next slide for me? Do I have the? Um, so you've got uh, uh, Suzanne's report that gave you, um, obviously, the, the piece on the work of council, talked about city council processes and procedures, uh, talked about your council priorities. Uh, you remember we, we, we zeroed in on education, uh, safety, and housing and decided that the other three, uh, resilience and um, uh, infrastructure and technology, would be sort of those, those tools that would cut across the others. And we, we decided not to do a separate meeting on those, but we themed the, uh, uh, these work sessions around those items. And um, so I would simply ask for you part. The other thing that really came out loud and clear from you all is, um, Get us information, let us digest that information, and let us have sort of substantive conversations at these meetings. So rather than kind of walking, you know, throwing a PowerPoint up here and walking you through all the items of that report, we're saying, hey, you got it? Um, anybody got any um, edits or comments or things they'd like to change? All right, so if no, uh, <laughs> the, the one thing that I think was um, that I heard throughout the idea of follow-up and the ability to have a dashboard and, and allow us to track the items that we say we're going to do uh, with what is actually happening and I just want to make sure that's not lost yeah. and that we have that on a regular basis and I know you're starting to introduce that with the city manager report so I appreciate that right. um, but you know whether it's um, as development deals or ideas that we bring up here that there's some tracking mechanism okay and that is true because we've been requested that for about two years now. So I'll come back. That'd be to great. That. All, right. all right. All right. So we're going to take draft off of that report, and that'll be uh, obviously we'll, you'll have all that, and we'll get into that. Um, can you pop the, the next slide up? Um, uh, so really, the, the things we've talked about uh, uh, the report itself in terms of next steps and where we go from here, uh, the city council uh, procedures which you've gotten a set of those. And so same thing I'd say to you, uh, I think they captured uh, what you were looking to accomplish and I'm getting a, a look over from this side of the table that maybe they didn't. <laughs> so this is a chance to talk about those and uh, react to what you got. Andrew, go ahead. Um, I appreciate, I think this is a good starting place. Um, there were a couple of issues that I had, um, not issues, or opportunities to add to. All right. Um, specifically, uh, the introduction of an ordinance, it's still not addressed in these procedures um, as to what the, what's the format for that. If one of us or a group of us has an idea or legislation that we'd like to have introduced, what's the procedure for that? Right, so that's, burn it. I, yeah, so that's section 4.1, I think. And, yep. and I, I think... I did talk about that. So let's but talk. I think it yeah. needs to be elucidated. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's very um, high level. All right. Um, so here's what we tried to say, which is basically we've got an agenda committee, which is the mayor, vice mayor, clerk, uh, city attorney, and, and me. And uh, if somebody brings an item up, then uh, it goes on, it goes to that group, and that group determines whether it goes on the agenda or not. And um, if it does, so be it. If it doesn't, 
then we are we are responsible to come back and explain why it didn't go. Uh, I think that was what we tried to say. If we didn't say that, okay. or if that's not enough. You're saying um, we decided that um, if we bring up something, it goes to one group or another group. What are these groups that you're referring so to? So the agenda, so so before, the week before each meeting, right. the, the mayor, the vice mayor, the city attorney, the city clerk and I meet yes, and, and kind of say, all right, here's when we have the agenda. And, and, and much of it is driven by the planning, what comes out of the planning commission and then other items. And so uh, Bernard helped me, but I think we, what, what the intent was, you say, I want an ordinance on ABC. And so you tell us all that here, then it's, then it's my job to get that in front of that group uh, prior to the next meeting and have that conversation and get that on the agenda if there's a reason it wouldn't go on the agenda. And I think part of the disconnect historically has been if it didn't go on the agenda, we never came back and said, hey, this is covered some other way or it's not on the agenda for these reasons or whatever that is. Uh, Bernard, what am I missing? You didn't miss it, but I'll, I will say it with the same thing with uh, different words, that um, the 4-1, which is the first draft here, um, provides that um, if you make a request, it, it's headed to a, an ordinance for you to vote on at the council. And rather than saying that, what it says is that um, it, it will not go forward if it's illegal. It may not go forward if there's not funding. And that if it's illegal or there's not funding, if it's illegal, I'll get back to the requester and, and say what the problem is. If there's not funding, the manager will get back to the requester and discuss the, the lack of funding for it. And if there's any other reason that it's not going on the agenda, the mayor will get back with the requester. If the requester is not happy with the opinion of the city attorney, city manager, or mayor, then it provides that the member can make a motion at a council meeting and if it passes by a majority, it will go on the agenda regardless of the opinion of the uh, attorney or manager. So I, I appreciate that, wow. and I apologize. It's a first draft. In my, in my brief reading of this, yeah. I didn't see that. Right. And I think it would be helpful to clarify, um, not request an item, but request an ordinance. Because it, 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 right. what is an item? Right. You well, know? item could be a budget item. But it, yeah, yeah so or it could it, be a resolution. resolution yeah. well, or a matter just to be discussed. Yeah, I would it, like to talk about. Sure, and I appreciate that, but for the for the lay reader who doesn't understand this, I would like for it to be that would be an highlighted resolution, ordinance, or item. budget item. Yep. Something, right. Right. So, so, something to so make that So my clear. only wow. thought about this is, and of course this would never happen with this august group. Well, let's just say <laughs> somebody that was a little left brought something up that was really just not even going to go anywhere, right. and we all knew it. I almost hate for it to go through all the pro trouble with Bernard and Doug and everybody. It almost seems like if somebody brings up an idea, we ought to get a general consensus if we want you all to spend any time on it. Can I mean, it be, does that work? Frank, I, I was just thinking, can not we just like have a... Sh if four people sign it that says they yeah. want, like, how do you guys do it in the General Assembly? You go around and hit people that co patrons, patrons, patrons of the bill. But We used to do that on school board, that we would, somebody would bring something up and we'd just have a casual straw vote and say, do we want to spend any time on this? Sounds and if we did, then it would go through the vetting and maybe back for a formal vote. But the other thing, just a little bit, is when exactly do we do this? <laughs> because we don't always have council interests. We don't always well, have a time. Yeah. yeah, so is we need to, would it be once a month that somebody ha yeah, so, that we have a so, designated yeah, so, time? So yeah, by, right, the so way that, I understood it, y'all tell me this doesn't work for you. It seems to me that it, it's like everything. It's, they're coming in in different ways. It might be that you're sitting here as a group saying, hey, an item comes up, and y'all say yes, no. It, or it, it might be up. Mr. Riddick and I have a one-on-one -on -one exactly. Thursday, and he says, you know, I want to get something on the agenda, and then it's incumbent upon me to bring it to that group. So I, I'd hate for you to, to say, in order for something to get on the agenda, it's got to get talked about in here, <coughs> vetted, and then off to the agenda committee. So I, sometimes I think we maybe overscript this stuff. So, so where, yes. my, my, where my problem comes in with that, Doug, and, yeah. and it, it, whether it's you or it was Marcus, is that stuff died in Marcus's book. So, I, I mean, I, as much as I... <laughs> Would trust to give you something to move forward. I I have to sit and wait and ask and ask and ask. So I'm just wondering if would it be okay if we just had a process? If I typed up something and just got 
walked around and asked you to support it, and then at the meeting I just said, I have five council members that say they are interested in this topic. Can I just turn it over to the mayor or you? And then do it that way. And I'm not saying I you're going to do that. Yeah, I, I think trust. that's another way to, again, I think you got to be careful not, not to over um, formalize it. But I got to tell you, that's a, to me, that'd be a very effective way to get my attention if you hand me a sheet of paper that says five people on city right. council have said to do this. Obviously, we're going to. I, I think that would be for major things. You know, we've had our controversies over the years with trying to get stuff on the agenda. And, really? Yeah. <laughs> Chickens, you know, for example. But I just, I, and I, I just don't think that staff's opinion should happen after council has decided that they want their opinion, not that they kill something. I think that's what was happening with some of the ideas that were coming up. It's, there was too much staff saying we don't want to do this for their opinions, and we're we're policymakers, right? So if we should be pushing policy, um, and you know, trying to get things accomplished, not making your lives miserable or harder, but just. I think but know that, that uh, I, sort of not, but and uh, know that grants and things are going to come forward that have got to go on the agenda that you don't want me bringing in here right. to say we got five hundred thousand dollars homeland security should I put it on the agenda? Of course we're going to put it on the agenda. Again, Mr. Riddick can bring something to me or get it on. You bring me a piece of paper that says five people want it. It's going to go I, on. So I think you got to have more than I'm one way to the, discrimin the discrimination yeah. laws changing yeah. that. If Andrea was pushing it, and it was discussed a couple times, but. If she just handed you five signatures of council members or initials that said we support moving this on, then it ha it should have to come before discussion and then a vote. I mean, it just well, and this delineates that it's going to be the next meeting, and if it's not, then you will be notified when it's going to be yeah. on. So it yeah, does right. address that. Mrs. Graves. I don't particularly want to have to run around and get five. <laughs> from y'all. I mean, I should either be able to call you if I have an idea that's of some kind of significance and say, hey, you know, I think this or that or the other, you know, we need to support hearing it out. And, but I, I don't know if I like the very, very, very formal So, Doug, I know Mr. Riddick wants to jump in. Um, I think Tommy, Tommy raise a, a valid point that he doesn't want his idea to get lost um, in the idea that maybe he shares his idea with a, may not be five, but he may share it with the mayor and or with the vice mayor um, or and maybe we can, you know, accommodate. But I wouldn't want Angelo or anyone to just run around having to get five. But the idea comes either during council concerns or when you have your, your meetings mm -hmm. with individual members. Um, I, I think I think you should you, you have to vet it. You have to you have to and if, again if for, for any reason that there's a conflict, then I think immediately um, let the member know. If Bernard has a constitutional question or it's, it's, it's a legality question, then immediately uh, let them know. And for any other reason there's a conflict because it may uh, conflict with one of our regional bodies such as you know HR attack or Hampton Rose Trans or any other group then um, I or you or Bernie need to let the member know and if, 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 if there's an insistence that that idea that concept uh, ordinance as Andrew mentioned goes forward then we will just have it drafted and voted up or down but we, we would like to have the staff's opinion at some point in, in the uh, attorney's opinion. Ms. Graves. But shouldn't we be able to, I mean, I've looked at, noticed the last few agenda um, informal sessions. We haven't had council concerns. And I think that council concerns is a place where we could throw out ideas. I know Tommy talks about Marcus's book getting lost, but like each of us has a deputy city manager. And so if I throw out an idea that I have an interest in and there's like heads nodding around the room, then I can work with Steve and we can like firm it up. Or if everybody's going like, no, we ain't doing that. Then I go, I mean, you kind of know what, <laughs> you know, what the, 
you know, what the consensus of the group is, but we don't have, our, we haven't had council concerns in like ever. And I get that we don't want to talk about tall grass and weeds and stuff like that, but that would be an ideal opportunity for us to bring up ideas or even if you want to put your idea to paper, not necessarily having to have it signed, but like on a memorandum or something and distribute it to the council and say, hey, this is something that I was thinking about or this is an idea that I had and these are my thoughts. You know, I think that time is a good time for that. So, so know this. So, so for example, so tomorrow morning, Will, most of that crowd up there will be around the table saying what happened last night. If you notice, and I'm going to talk some more about the weekly update, but if you notice in this last weekly update, here was city council interest. So everything from um, fun flushing facts, somebody asked a question about how much is it caught, you know, I like that <laughs> to I like that. Um, you know, the Cox franchise agreement. And so we tried to, and, and so this is kind of going forward, this is kind of your shot at saying, wait a minute, I mentioned... Um, you know, the scar factory, and nobody, I, I didn't see it on the update. So part part of it, what I'm hearing from you all is part of it is um, we want not only the information, but we want it consistently. So if if, um, uh, if Ms. Johnson gets it, you know, we want to make sure that Mr. Riddick gets it. So this is our way of, of trying to respond to you. And so I think this starts to address that idea that stuff doesn't fall through the cracks. If we have, if we have council concerns and we put something out and you put it on that update, as a as a response back, it can either be if in committee. It's gonna it's with the agenda committee, and it's gonna be on an upcoming agenda in what is this March in March or in April because there are some legal things that we have to discuss or some financial things that we have to, some kind of follow up. Update. Yes, and that way we know it didn't go into the black hole, and you know, or this was not legal because of certain issues, uh, Andrea, please see further, or Angela, you know, we have something. And so the next thing you're going to see as part of this is a 90-day look ahead. So you'll start to see not only what the work sessions look like, but what the agendas look like. So the other thing you're going to be able to do is look and say, oh, you know what, I got this is coming, we're going to deal with that on April 15th. Or, hey, this thing's not on the 90-day look ahead, I think it got lost. Right. Mr. Riddick, then Mr. Smeagol. Yeah, uh, my only concern is that uh, we won't have an overzealous council member. And there are some tendencies already to try to set policy. You know, to say, hey, we're going to change the whole the way this thing is going. <coughs> um, I was, you know. Are we supposed to set policy? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, 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 and, I, and that's what is confusing to me. You know, when we got it, when I got here, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, things are already in place. We embellished it if necessary. We reduced uh, some of the facets of it if necessary. But I can't remember a council person saying, well, okay, this is what I want to see done. And from now on, this is, a, this is, is how it's going to be. I'm, I'm just afraid that uh, I've seen the tendency that, uh, that, that we have, a, a, you know, that, that some people might have a tendency of saying, hey, I'm going to run this show. And that's what's frightening to me. We have a city manager uh, who is is running. This is a city manager run government. It's not mayor, not individual council members. It is a city manager run government. And based on that, I think anything that we do should come from the top. I don't think it should go from the bottom up. It should come from the top down. Some things that you you know you want to you know work on, but I just don't. I just don't have the confidence that any of us around the table can say, well, hey, look, this is how we're going to do this in Norfolk. And I'm afraid that um, what happened a lot of times, uh, Tommy talked about Marcus's book or something like that, and, and some councilmen would say some of the most ridiculous things in the world. And Marcus would say, okay, yeah, you know, just write it down. You know, we just can't, you know, anyway. No, just your stuff yeah. Yeah. Right. My Riddick stuff is never the, ridiculous. Right, let's if go the city up the manager most. screws what? up, the council is who gets blamed for it. So, it if the city manager screws up, then the council is who gets blamed for it. So we do have some bearing on policy. Yeah. 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 Um, Mr. Smigel, Mr. Thomas. I mean, I'm, I'm, overall, I've been satisfied. I winter, you know, I have an issue. I sent it to him. There's an answer that gets back. I think it's more of the, the meat. Um, that's the potato stuff, but the meat part is the part that I think even, you know, with um, 
requests for like looking at budgets and accounts and things like that and you know some of that could just be the way that um, Marcus was told to operate um, and and so you know not getting answers back just to make sure that that stuff wasn't out and controversial I, and I understand that happens I what I don't want to have happen though Doug is and those are it, it's good that you guys respond and it's um, it's not against anybody who puts these together but oftentimes when those responses come back it's information that we already know um, it's not getting down to the root of the problem and so it's it, when council concerns come up you know I, I, let me give you an example every year I've um, I've, and I've, I haven't said anything recently about the amount of lights that are out in the city um, but by Dominion. There are so many lights out, and it, and it makes our city look horrible. You know, and, and the response that I got back when I bring this up every time is there's a process for reporting lights. Um, and I know that. Um, I understand there's a process. I, I admitted that they gave me access to the map to report those lights being out. But my concern was is that we're supposed to be getting a credit from Dominion if those lights aren't fixed in a certain amount of time. How much money are we getting back? Um, is anybody recording, you know, um, how long those lights are sitting out and who's keeping track of that? And so I ne the response was that. And then there was a meeting, I think, that they tried to set up with me and Terry to go look at Public Works at some lights and uh, at a, it got canceled or something to look at more efficient lights. I didn't ask for that. I just I wanted to hold Dominion accountable for all these lights being out or that they'll fix a light and it's out in two months again, you know, or are they putting just a used bulb in there? Um, it, you know, something like that is not something that I think council needs to vote on. You guys don't want to vote on a policy on There's nothing to vote on that. But it's a concern that I think maybe other council members may be interested in. And then we should get a full response on that or a presentation, just like the water issue. That was great. They, they get a quick response like that on an issue that was blowing up. Um, that was exactly, I think, what everybody's looking for. So maybe you're going to bring a different style to that. Um, I don't, I don't know, but I don't, I don't. I think most council members here, I, I don't know, when to categorize all of this as having ridiculous items, but um, I think we just have different passions that may be different than other council members, and so we want those pa passions to be answered. Um, and if there's enough interest, then maybe it turns into policy or a vote on something. So, um, uh, Mr. Reddy, do you want to respond directly to, to Mrs. Smeagle? If not, you... you oh, uh, yeah, no, you I was, no, I, I was, what I was just thinking, I had a question, and, and everybody can, at least Dr. Whibley and Tom and Angela might be the chime in because this, they were present at this time. Bike lanes. And was that a policy that Dr. Whibley that you push through number one chickens you know I'll chickens were I, I mean yeah. chickens <laughs> were you know, I mean, it was, it was what I'm talking about as far as policy that's you know, policy chickens yeah. because it changed there was an ordinance needed right to change that but yeah. bike lanes that wasn't an ordinance. ordinance that was a bike we voted on a bike plan right okay. plan. right okay. and that came out of essentially the bike okay. and pedestrian but the chickens we had a uh, Conversation, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it didn't just you know happen overnight, you know, and uh, so. birds, bunnies, and all right, Mr. Right. Thomas to yes. Mrs. McClellan. Yes, uh, well, so um, thank you for the initial draft, and I'm assuming Mr. Fisher is going to take kind of some of our concerns back and uh, maybe provide some revisions. So I've, I've got a few things I want to go through. Top of page three. Um, Here's the lawyer, guys. Yeah. Here's the lawyer. You didn't put line you items next tab. to these. You didn't say page two, yeah. line five. Exhibit, exhibit, your red line exhibit, tab, exhibit so. Mr. Thomas, what exhibit? No. For the court. Um, top of page three, where it talks about notice of a meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. It indicates that the, the copy of the notice we dropped off at either your house or place of business. I would say that in this day and age, it's also permitted yeah. to include email notice. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for those types of meetings. Or texting. Yeah, there were some archaic you know, things in here. Yeah. Um, sure. Right. Uh, it's from our charter. Yes. Uh, adding email to uh, the top In addition of, to it. Shouldn't to be a drop box. In addition. Yes. Right. Yes. Drop box. Um, middle of page six. Um, it's 5-2 paragraph D. Uh, I think we just need to uh, flesh that out a little bit. And, you know, if the applicant signs up just to answer questions, and maybe we can continue to keep it on the consent agenda. I just think that needs to be fleshed out a little bit. Um, I, 
I'm sorry, that um, if a person is signed up just to ask questions, it stays on the answer agenda. If the applicant is right. answering. That's what I meant to say. That has been the practice. It stays on the consent yeah. agenda. Right. Yeah, it, it's just it. not spelled out in right. here. Right. And Got so it. it would seem that that would not be allowed. Um, so I'm right. saying include it so it would be allowed. Right. Yeah. So that has been the practice. Um, they, uh, the applicant signs up to answer questions only. <laughs> and uh, they don't necessarily ask for that item to, to be moved. Right. I treat it as part of the consent agenda, but noting that they're here to answer questions. But we need to flesh it out to make sure we clarify it. Um, another minor change, page 9, um, paragraph is numbered 8. Uh, it, used, it indicates that the use of cell phones is prohibited. Um, uh, I think the use of any, I, I just think that the sound should be prohibited. It's just not written well. Uh, everyone in that room is using their cell phone. We're all in our eyes. Uh, the other one, uh, page 15, section 8-1. Again, just bring it up in today's age and include that we're posting the videos on, on YouTube on the website. And there's an archive on the website so that people can go view those videos. Uh, on YouTube and the website. Or whatever is correct as far as IT is con considering it. Uh, and then generally, I, I agree with Dr. Whitley and a few others who've indicated that the council concerns uh, is probably an appropriate time. We just don't have it often enough. Uh, so maybe if there's a commitment to have council concerns often enough or some other vehicle, uh, again, Mr. Fishko, I'll let you hopefully flesh that out. Um, I'll disagree with. Uh, Ms. McClellan on the use of the word ordinance. I do, I do think that narrows what we're looking at here because a lot of things that we do do not require an ordinance. Budget. There are issues, uh, there are discussions, anything like that. So I think it needs to be a little wider than just anything having to do with an ordinance. Um, and then, you know, uh, we're, we're discussing uh, a very uh, formal process uh, in the rules of procedure. But a lot of us here today are suggesting a much more informal process, so maybe allowing for both a formal and informal, such that if the informal process fails us, you always can rely upon uh, that more formal process uh, if, if you need it. So those, those are my comments. All right. Ms. McClellan? Um, I'm happy to have a more wide definition there. That's fine. I'm just was suggesting that, e.g., for example, um, in that section on 4.1. Um, section 8.3, the minutes of the council meeting. Currently, um, it says that they'll be kept by the clerk of the council. Um, is, should they also, should it also be reflected that they're available on our website for review? The minutes of the council meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that how, are they now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they will also be posted on our website. I think that is, that's the practice. That is the practice, the current practice. They have been requesting that. Yeah. Just chronicle it. Yep. Is that all? Well, I'll just hold it at that. Okay. So can we just say at the, every work session we have a council interest, or can we just well, come I, up with that? Yeah, so, so, so well, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. So, at the last meeting, at four, we went in at four four thirty. Four 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 thirty. Four thirty. Council meeting. Right. Eight right. four thirty. Wait, four thirty. Four thirty. No, no, four thirty. Thirty. Instead right. of meeting on Tuesday. Instead of our last meeting. Yeah. 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 So what? What I've tried to do, uh, listening to uh, the council, it's not like rush everything through, and I think Doug has responded to that by not putting something on the agenda that we're going to vote on the same night. So you know, thank you for that. This uh, working meeting is, is a continuation of trying to sp spend time on issues, uh, concerns uh, that requires you know, uh, more time. This is also council concerns, this meeting. And so if something comes up, ordinance or item or something that we wanted uh, to, to be fleshed out. Um, I think Doug has indicated that he is 
tracking it and you will follow up uh, and treat every meeting when, it, when an idea comes out or an issue comes up as a concern of the council, a concern as the member, because there are different uh, ways that, uh, that, that ideas surface to the top. But I do think that we need to have council concerns um, at every meeting. If it's at 4.30 or at 5 o'clock sharp, as Martin uh, 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 wants to start the meetings, whenever it is, we should start the meeting and have those concerns for the first 30 minutes until we move into the, to the more formal agenda. So I, I think they need to be answered as well. Uh, I don't ever remember getting an answer. Okay. <laughs> You, you know, got so one this week. You got yeah. one. You got uh, yeah. okay. one, two, three, four, five, seven of them. When you're, uh, well, just remember, there, there are multiple ways that you may have to communicate with That's great. council members. Right. So. Fair so, enough, Ms. Johnson. Fair enough. So, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, um, for our council concerns, upon our discussion at work sessions, informal um, meetings, as we discuss in our meetings, we can bring up um, council concerns. Or are we saying that it also becomes an agenda on our agenda that, as we used to do, council concerns? Yeah. So, so this is what I what I've shared. Okay. Whenever okay. an idea comes up, and we're on it. We're on the issue, and you have an idea. I want Doug. I want staff to treat it as a concern, as something that you want him to investigate, to vet for an answer. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we should have the 30 or 45 minutes of, of just council concerns. But right now, if there's an idea okay. that needs vetting, maybe an idea, it may not be an ordinance, it may be about the budget. For example, HRT budget. If there's going to be a budget shortfall, um, as we draft our budget, um, Doug may have that addressed in the budget that he's going to present to us very, very soon. Knowing that, we're going to face an additional shortfall from Happy Roads Transit. Thank I, think Doug, I think Doug understands that, and we are looking for some direction in the budget on but we didn't have to tell you that. You just know that, that that's something that, we, that we're looking at and it's going to be an issue. So I don't want any idea not to be vetted or not to be investigated. You know, it may be a silly idea, as Mr. Riddick said. It may be a silly idea, may, but I think that if the council member has a concern, has an idea, I think staff owes that council member an answer. And so be it it. When the council concerns, or you're, you're, you're meeting with Doug, or you're meeting with Bernie, let's let's get answers to to the questions. Mr. Riddick said he didn't get any answers, but I think you, I think you got some answers. From him. I wasn't talking about this part. Just particular <laughs> previous administration. Yeah. Previous. So you, 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 so your answers in the black book as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let, me, let me say something. <laughs> what is it when when there's a, an expression where it says that you're just kicking a can down the road? What does that mean? You're putting it off. You just delay, well, this is, this delay is the we, inevitable. This, this is what you we're delaying doing. the inevitable. This is what we're doing as a council. We're just kicking the can down the road. We are not dealing with anything, any meaty issues. Now, uh, we have public work issues. We have the worst roads in the region, and uh, we need to address that. Uh, pedestrian safety. We have some of the worst intersections as far as pedestrians being safe. Uh, Mamie and I have spoken about Tidewater Drive and Lafayette Boulevard uh, forever. Traffic flow. It's a very expensive, uh, it would be a very expensive proposition, but we have to figure out how to get the flow of traffic from north to south. Church Street cannot handle it. Uh, Tidewater Drive has is, uh, is, is, is become a bottleneck there, and they're the only two arteries that we have that uh, flow traffic from uh, north to south. Uh, we need to make some uh, some heavy uh, public works uh, investment issues in buying property so we can move traffic. Um, light rail might not ever come. Uh, with the 
cost, and here we are dealing with issues already at HIT. But, you know, we, we need to, it's, it's, let's, look, let's look at Virginia Beach Boulevard, for example, going from north to south, I mean from east to west. It's, it's slow traffic until you get to Newtown Road. When you get to Newtown Road, uh, they have eliminated the feeder lanes, they've eliminated the little traffic <coughs> alley, and this is something that Norfolk said they were going to do 10 years ago. It's, uh, it's, it's expensive and uh, to do, but coming down to Virginia Beach Boulevard, when you get the military circle, you need to eliminate those traffic islands. You need to eliminate those uh, feeder lanes, and, and so traffic can flow. Uh, you have a big issue when you get to uh, uh, Kempsville Road because you have an overpass there, so that's uh, it's a heavy issue. But we are not moving traffic. Maybe we want to be a bottleneck city. You know, maybe we don't, don't, want to, don't want to take the chance of it. Speeding. Dr. Yes. Wibley and I have been talking about uh, speeding, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and you just have to maybe just sometimes pull over to the side and see how fast everybody's driving. Everybody's in a hurry. Um, did the General Assembly send him about hands free uh, this year? As far as uh, cell phones? Yeah, no. Um, Thelma. 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 Yeah, no, I, didn't, I didn't see it. So they didn't, okay, but anyway, we need to slow traffic down. We, we are, we have the worst roads. They can't accommodate the speeds that we have them posted at, as and so we just need to. Uh, when we come in here on this particular Tuesday, uh, everybody, not everybody, but if you desire, you should have some heavy issues that uh, that we give to the manager issues that. Uh, during the other meetings where we have ordinances and and things to you know to deal with, this is when we should stop kicking the can down the road and uh, you know and, and get something done. So that so Mr. So Mr. Bay, you have you have highlighted the purpose of, of this meeting right. um, is to spend time on those policy issues uh, that uh, that we want the manager to consider. In addition to that, you know, like downtown parking, one of the things that we have to address, uh, Mr. Manager, is uh, public parking. Uh, with the opening of the main and opening of the Waterside District and the conferences and the conventions and the meetings that are already scheduled, how, how are we going to accommodate, uh, you know, the traffic uh, uh, and, and offer public parking in, in our garages or in our surface lots? Uh, that is going to be a concern. It's going to be an issue. Um, so that's another. So remember also, um, uh, we heard you loud and clear. And so each of these work sessions has it not to not, not the first Tuesday, because this was kind of your, right. you know, let's do our thing, but the, the second and fourth, they're themed. So your first one on the 21st is housing. And then I think the 28th is education and the next one public safety. So what you can know, Mr. Riddick is on April, whatever that is, third, fifth, or I think it's April 11th. We'll be ta in this room talking about public safety. See? And in that so public safety, what Mr. Riddick talked about right. as far as speed and our our secondary roads, and what I just mentioned as relates to parking, Absolutely. that comes under the umbrella under public safety. Right. And hopefully you can, Absolutely. and there'll be others. Okay. Right. And let me say something about the parking. So <clears throat> we recognize now that with everything we're going on downtown, that we don't have adequate parking. True. So Remember, as a, that would be said. Yeah. So what did you say, Tom? I said, you ever thought that would be said? Yeah. <laughs> so we said too much. Do we as a council decide, well, maybe we need to go out and buy some shuttle buses? You know, how, how do we and identify some parking uh, over by Harbor Park? And every 10 minutes, we'll have a, a bus taking people downtown. Yeah, so that's one of the things yeah. I think that the manager so needs to bring, bring a recommendation. Out. You mean like a net bus? So let's, yeah. so well, how about, you know what? I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't do a net bus because no, that'd be uh, extra money <laughs> HRT. <laughs> Let's buy our own buses. <laughs> you know. Yeah. All right, so, so know this. I think you do, but it bears repeating. So, you know, 60, 90 days ago, we started saying the spring of 17 is going to be a whole different ball game in, in Norfolk. And so we, we started meeting pretty much every Friday. Morgan Whalen was chairing a group that uh, started out internally, uh, but, but grew to include everybody from DNC to the folks at the Maine, the folks at Waterside, and said, all right, what are the, what are the dynamics that are going to change? We know they're going to change everything from when garbage cans need to get picked up because there's more garbage at, at uh, Waterside of the Maine to 
How's traffic going to flow to where is everybody going to park? And so there was a subcommittee from that. And I got to tell you, you got some real talent in this organization. And Bart New is, is sort of taking that on. And we've looked at these agreements and, and not assumed that because it's in the agreement, that's the only way we can do it. And so we've kind of gotten people in a room and said, hey, can we shift these people here? And they, so we're, we're doing that. Now, are we going to be tight for parking in that Main Street corridor? Yes. Um, and it, it is what it is. But we, we, and I would tell you, you have adequate parking, it just might not, it's not necessarily in the right places. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so absolutely we're working through that. But I think for you all to get in the weeds of where should we have parking, I, I discourage you from doing that just because you got some parking expert. You come in and say, hey, I want to hear what your parking plan is, or I want to report on your parking plan. Absolutely. Yes, Andrea. So um, at a higher level with mm -hmm. regard to parking, are we establishing, um, through the use of technology and communication, providing real-time parking updates for folks who are looking for parking? We, I'm going to tell you, I'm not sure we're the working, technology we've got. So right now, I don't think it, we, right now, now we don't have that. But that's, a, that's, a but that's goal, certainly but some that's conversation we've had. And, and, and frankly, we got involved in that in my last role, and it's, it's, it's pretty slick. You get into the, the apps and all that. And but it of, only takes one bad experience yep, for sure. somebody to come downtown, and not have a good parking experience, mm -hmm. and they never come back. Mm -hmm. So I cannot emphasize That's how important this is. And it's just like Andrew says, the technology is out there. We've been hitting on BART about this. To, They ought to be able to come down, and it says three spots available <coughs> here, take a right. You can reserve and, spots in other big cities. So. Right, and you can pay for them, and they can tell you when um, you need to pay again, and all and, of that. And, and, and you know, coming so off, I can get coming you off of, somewhere. Coming right? off uh, uh, you know, 264, or, Berkeley Bridge or coming off Capicella, or if they're coming uh, from Grammy or the Midtown, there should be a communication board. You know, 100 spaces are available in the Fountain Garage. You know, 200 spaces are uh, available in Ward Center Garage. I mean, that needs to, you know, and we just need to figure out a way to make sure that people know exactly where the parking is. All right. So did you like how Councilman Rick and I snuck in council concerns while we were talking about this? It's, did you notice that? That's what it's about. <laughs> that's what it's about. That's, that's yeah. the purpose. And also, Mr. Mr. Reddy made a little policy there, too. He did. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're going to get you on the policy. He's not a policy maker. <laughs> All, right, All right. So, that's, uh, so we'll, we'll make the amendment to the, the, the procedures. Uh, budget. Pro the other thing you all said, sort of when we finish, if you look at Suzanne's summary piece, one of the next was kind of budget process. Where are we? You've gotten you've gotten a calendar that lays out the key dates and all that. So I think you have all those. And, and uh, obviously, I'll make the budget presentation on the 11th of April. Uh, tonight again is about you know this idea of substantive deliberation. Did we change the rest with the real estate? We're going to yeah, do it on the council night. I think we've. I well, think Rex. Yeah, well, but the proposal, and I should should have, should have said it. Uh, the proposal is to do the budget uh, hearing uh, at one of our regular scheduled council real meetings. Real estate. Real, estate. Real, estate. <coughs> uh, real estate, yes. A portion of the budget. Uh, because last year, I don't think anyone Zero. signed no up. Zero. But yes. do we still get an extra lunch? <laughs> Two meals. Doggy <laughs> bag. Ms. Johnson. So, Brett, will you resend out? The order again, since yes. we're going to include it in one of the meetings. And are we scheduled to? Are we scheduled to meet with the school board again before we vote on the budget? Has that happened? There's there 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 isn't a meeting a joint meeting scheduled uh, with the school board. Just not a joint meeting scheduled. So. It, instead of meeting with the whole board, is it possible at least to have maybe uh, Dr. Boone and uh, Rodney, uh, Mr. Jordan, come in and at least talk to us about the challenges in their budget that they're having? Because yeah, yeah. so I, I think that uh, yeah, that is a possibility, and it's also a possibility for them to come and sign up to speak. Uh, well, they, well, yeah, we, they will do that, but yeah. we need the dialogue. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I just want to make sure because there's been a lot of comments made about a drop in enrollment, and so we're kind of overfunding. But they've also had to pick up quite a bit of expenses from the VRS and the state. So, now, I, I think there's now, Tommy. I don't know minor how things we need to talk, detail. Yeah, I don't know much uh, Doug wants to talk about the budget, but I do know that he is having conversations uh, with uh, with. Dr. Boone and the school 
school board about the budget. So, so yesterday, much you want to talk yeah, about? No, 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 so I won't go into much. Uh, okay. So yesterday, that one of the um, for me in the sixty days I've been here, whatever it's been, uh, there's a little bit of a disconnect between her staff and my staff, and, and nobody's fault. We just did this new players everywhere. So we, yesterday we hosted a meeting that included essentially Dr. Boone and her senior staff, and uh, me, deputy city managers, and uh, budget director. Uh, not so much talk about the budget at this point, but just to frankly get to know each other. We got we just got stuff that we got to work through, and we thought it would be a thirty minute meet and greet and how you doing, and we ended up talking for two and a half hours, and so it was a very healthy conversation. So we're we're establishing that communication, and we'll we'll get into the, the detail. We didn't talk much about budget. We've seen what she's proposed and said that that uh, we would uh, continue to talk about that. All right, Mrs. Graves. I'm just going to throw it out here. I know it's tradition of sorts, but I don't see the point in if the school board presents their budget, it's been tradition that they speak or come before us at our budget hearing. I don't personally see the point in that. They're, the school board at this point, the, the school chair is an elected official. Um, and, and the rest of the board at some point will be elected officials. We meet with them on a whatever kind of basis we meet with them on, but let's go with the regular basis. And any one of us here at this table and the manager has the ability to pick up the phone and call Dr. Boone or Roddy Jordan or any member of the school board. I think it's insulting, my personal opinion, that they have to come and stand before us like we're God or something and ask for or restate whatever it is that they have already given us in their budget. So that's just, you know. They, they, they obviously sense. think that uh, <clears throat> it's not important because in the last two budget uh, cycles, uh, the chairman of the school board and the uh, super, superintendent have come dragging in late and all my time on council, the first two individuals to speak, the chairman of the school board and the uh, superintendent. And uh, even when uh, the last uh, fellow was here, same thing. Sam King? Yeah, King. They came dragging in late. And that was an insult to me. I even mentioned it. But they did have a meeting. They did they have, have a meeting. Look, they know when our budget is going to be, we're going to have that public hearing. So whatever kind of meeting they had, they're going to have it. Before or after, it was an insult to me for them to come dragging in. So I don't care if they come or not. I, I, I disagree, and I, I, I wasn't insulted by it. I think it's a matter of mutual respect. We ask them to respect us as a governing body, and I think we have to show them the same kind of respect as a governing body. There go my, my thought of why do they have to do that in the first place? I don't see, it's not like they have to come and grovel to us for whatever it is. They presented us their budget, they sent it over, we have meetings, we talk to them on a regular basis. I don't see the point, you know, as if we're up here and they're down here and they just, you know. Let's just take them all. Yeah, so, I don't. Right. So so we at the end of the day, my, at the end of the day, my point of bringing this up <laughs> is, we've made education one of our priorities. And regardless of personalities or how we feel, at the end of the day, this is about our kids in our city and what's happening in our schools. And we are getting ready to lose more teachers to Virginia Beach and Chesapeake. And I, I can feel it coming. Um, and, you know, I, I hate disclosing this, but just participating in HR opportunities to recruit teachers, there's people are not beating down the door that come to the city of Norfolk and teach. They, they in her budget she they are losing 34 teachers um, because of enrollment decrease um, and a lot of those are going to be through attrition people that are just leaving but there is already a deficit in teachers um, which was discussed today in principle uh, for the day there's openings that they still haven't filled in elementary schools since September and in the superintendent's budget she has put uh, five million dollars as extra in order to adjust the compensation plan and and so as a city we, at the end of the day we are I think we're more accountable for the schools than probably anybody we've always talked about that but they are coming to us with a need and it can't be one of those things that we just ignore every year that I've been on council we have we've said we give them the money it's up to them to determine how they spend it but I think that the, we have to have a better understanding of how that money is being spent 
and that it really isn't necessarily 100% being wasted on things. There, there are some tight things that have come down from the state. And I know in Dr. Boone's announcement as well, she talked about pushing the district more towards SOQs. And remember, the SOQs are not fully funded by the state. And as w if we start moving towards the SOQs in a city like ours with the needs of our students, you're talking about cutting all of those positions that are support positions that are needed in order to assist an urban education and, 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 a, and we're, we're struggling. So I want to have, I, I'm fine, I will schedule a separate meeting with Dr. Boone and have that, but I can't be the only one all the time that's carrying you know, the, the weight and the information all the time about education. I need other people that uh, I counsel to talk and dig down deep into that budget and find out where those, those are. it can't just be about because they're losing kids, we shouldn't give them more money. It's not about that. You can lose kids and still need money. Um, the ADM that we get for each kid doesn't pay for all the expenses that are in the district. And we are we want to fix schools, but we are getting close to a crisis, uh, particularly with staffing. And we can't put on, uh, long-term subs, and mostly in our high-need schools, teaching the whole year. I think there's 18 um, elementary openings right now that still haven't been filled so I know in, your, in some of the schools that Mamie's been working in, they still have long-term subs that have been there since September uh, because they can't find quality teachers and we need to give them tools or we need to assist them with finding quality teachers on that. And they're trying. I think they're, this board, I've heard it from Noel now, I've heard it from Tanya Bassine, Yvonne Wagger, they, they are trying to work with us and it can't always be that we respond. Your enrollment's decreasing so we're not giving you any more money. If we're going to make this a priority, we've got to work with them and look at what their their true needs are um, on this. And I, I, I'm worried about that. I'm really, I, I, I don't know if I can go through another budget cycle with us having those conversations without them. Uh, Mrs. Johnson and Dr. Whitley. Um, I think that um, as far as us being almost at a crisis, we're, we're like here. I'm being polite. Um, and it's very important, I think, that the city council, as a governing body, understands what the, the school's needs are. But at the same time, what we're doing here that really excites me as a governing body is that we're taking a look at our budget, not just in the sense of numbers. Numbers are important, but truly, what are the needs? How are we operating our city budget in terms of where our money goes? Um, are there things that we need to replace? Can we do a better job um, as, as far as how we organize ourselves? And I think that Norfolk Public Schools, for our understanding, we have to understand those needs too. Um, I'm very concerned about our schools uh, and that there are extremely many long-term subs in our school, especially in our schools that um, are what we would consider at risk. Um, and that this next wave of teachers and administrators are gonna be, it's gonna be a big hit for Norfolk Public Schools and us as um, a city. Recently, I think, Mr. Smeagol, um, there was a teacher's uh, job fair, and nobody, nobody showed really showed up at Crossroads Elementary School. Wow. And we're considered having a, um, a job fair early on, and we could only get a small number of teachers to apply to Norfolk Public Can, let me just add, public can I respond to that too? I, I, we found out recently that Virginia Beach um, paid a $500 bonus to their teachers to tell them that they're not coming back now so that they know how many openings they have so that they can pull our teachers from us. So they're doing, they're getting ready to do all their big job fairs in which our teachers are going to jump ship and make more money over there. Um, and so that they know their numbers. Whereas I, I'm looking at our budget, we're gonna be voting on our budget um, that on the 23rd. 
our school system needs to know if we're waiting until May 23rd to adopt our budget, um, they've, we've already passed all of the budget cycles of all the other districts on uh, making their decisions so that their school boards know how many teachers they can hire off of that. And we're going to be going into June now and July on uh, the school board um, not knowing how much money they really have up front in order to know how many teachers they can hire. And that's why we've got to have these serious conversations because we were behind last year and we got the bottom of the hiring pool because they weren't hiring until July or August because we took so long on that, um, on the budget. Where the other systems, because they're, they are increasing enrollment, so they always know they need teachers, but they're, we, we've got to have... But they don't, they haven't passed their budget yet, have they? No, they know how much money they're getting. But the, they don't know how much they're going to pay. They, they know, yeah, they do. On they, their, they've already passed their budget? Yeah, their, their budgets are usually done by the time, all the other localities are usually done by the time we're still doing our public hearings. But they're not done now. No, they're not done now, no. But, but they they're, they're already small. finding out which teachers aren't coming back. When I did principal for a day, um, a couple years ago, I had a conversation with the principal that I was at the school, and she said just what Tommy just said in terms of their inability to get teachers because Norfolk Public Schools doesn't know what they're going to be, what their budget's going to look like, so they don't know how many teachers are going to be able to hire, so they can't put them on a contract, and then you get whatever is kind of left over at all. Just the only thing I'm really frustrated about this conversation, I've said it every year, and I specifically said it at the beginning of September, put four meetings down. Get them in the schedule yep. and absolutely chronicle it. And here we are. I just asked Andrea. She said, yep, we've had two. And now we're not looking at one before budget. I mean, what is wrong with this? Why Why can't this happen? I mean, is am I the only one that cares about this? So, so it's, well, then, why, how can we not meet with the school board before budget? How, how can that even happen? I think that we, certainly we should meet, but I think that we should have some parameters. Um, when we talk about the cost to educate and the standards of quality and what the state pays per child. Right now, um, our ability to pay is um, it's about 29 cents. Okay, The state standards for quality, um, if we go with their calculation, it's about 71 cents. But we pay much more. If we only did what the state standards for quality dictates, we would only, our, our, our dollars to Norfolk Public Schools would only be about 29 cents on, 29 cent on the dollar uh, in the seven cents that comes from the state. However, it costs much more to educate a child. Our budget, 30% of our budget is dedicated to public education, K-12 education. In order for our school division to compete with other divisions that Tommy mentioned, losing teachers to Chesapeake and Bay Beach for the most part, it's going to require uh, the school division paying teachers more. Um, I believe their appropriation last year was about $317 billion. Only 150 million of that came from the state. The rest was local and federal. When, when, when Chesapeake and Virginia Beach is paying, uh, Tommy gave it a number, four and five thousand dollars more, in some cases, depending on the, the discipline, if it's science and math. Um, either we approach a categorical funding scheme or we continue to do the, the lump or the, the large appropriation. Um, Doug, that's some of the parameters that we are going to have to embrace when we meet with the school board about the reality of what, is, what it is we can do with our constraint, with our ability uh, to pay and raise dollars. We have a, we have a pretty much most part of balanced budget, where the, where's the money going to come from? If we're not going to cut services, we're not going to raise taxes, 
and we have more unfunded mandates coming from the state, and we have a shrinking school age population, where are the additional dollars going to come from? Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. McLeod and Mr. Riddick. So, um, of course, I'm new. It's my first budget cycle. Um, it sounds to me, though, and we've had some transition, of course, in administration. I don't know. Their, their budget's sort of baked. And ours is almost baked. So um, I wonder, though, is it appropriate or have there been opportunities in the past where council says, here are some priorities in your coming budget year that we would like to address how is that done elsewhere? so 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 if you have kept so back to the so categorical, categorical the categorical funding you can do that but without without categorical funding or passing a budget with the language to speak to those priorities that you're you're thinking about it's basically a 317 million there's some understanding on how certain dollars are being spent but unless you adopt the categorical uh, funding a mechanism those priorities are just wishful priorities unless you tie it to budget language or you put it in a, you put it in categorical funding mr. Smith all right so um, uh, I'm okay. sorry okay. Mr. Okay. I do yeah. apologize yeah uh -huh. uh, my question uh, I guess might go to dr. Whitley Tommy anybody when should we start having expectations and results of the school district. Well, that's, that's the school improvement you know, plan that right. we, that we that and we then ask for. And then secondly, are people, are, are teachers leaving because of salary or working conditions? You know, I mean, I understand that this is a very hostile, you know, environment to work in. And so, you know, we need to do something about that. Um, well, the school board needs to do something about it. But we haven't been able to get it right the last four or five superintendents. We haven't been able to get it right. And it's not right now. And, uh, you know, I'll leave it at that. Mr. Graves and Mr. Do you want to answer? Yeah. I think that, and my, my, just my personal opinion, I think that part of the struggle is that we've had what I've sat in on two and a half superintendents and I call it a half just because he was an acting superintendent but I guess we've had two acting so that makes three and I mean be an act. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, three quarters. you can't get it right if you're always changing course Bentley came in with a plan when Bentley left that plan got lost in the water Sam King came in with the plan when he left, that plan got tossed in the water. Now Dr. Boone is here and she's got a plan. It's like we're always stopping and restarting and you can never even back out of the driveway, much less get down the, out of the neighborhood and down the street because we're always stopping and restarting. I don't know what, and, and people are very quick to um, off with their heads, not about the HRT people, but they're very <laughs> quick to off with their heads if they don't see immediate change in a school district. And you have to give somebody's plan a chance to work. I mean, they all might have been good plans. We just don't know because none of them were here long enough to implement the plan and actually see any results as to whether or not they worked or didn't work. So to answer your question, I think it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. I think that I uh, there's a lot of people who want to teach in Norfolk and love teaching Norfolk kids, mm -hmm. um, and they would stay if they received more compensation for the additional hassles that come uh, mm -hmm. with teaching in an urban setting. Mm -hmm. um, I think on an exit uh, interview, they will say that it's um, you know discipline in the classroom and things like that, but I think you can keep teachers longer um, if you compensate them. Um, I know that because I, I'm I, I may be losing a very good teacher this year um, Because she commutes from Chesapeake where she lives uh, But she may stay if she was making what she would make if she lived in Chesapeake because she wants to teach in our school But she's spending money every day driving in and, and the hassle of that I just I do want to know and I've said this to the mayor before about the categorical spending I if we if we're going to look at that I want to look at how the school district is spending their money first 
and those categories to see if it, maybe they are spending it where they need to spend it. Um, I, I think it's things like the VRS contribution, um, medical uh, costs that have gone up that is the part that is chipping and eating away at the budget. Even with the reduction in staff, those costs, are, I think, are outweighing um, the loss in staff. And um, I think that we need to look at that because, I mean, I'm looking at their budget. They're only spending $10 million on technology out of a $321 million budget, uh, according to this. They are going to lose more federal funding. Title I, Title II funds are getting cut. It will only probably get worse as this administration continues to go after public schools. Uh, but they already know that they're going to lose money with Title I and Title II for next year. So they are lose, losing that federal fund. And, you know, there was a salary increase of 2% in the state's budget, but that's not coming in until January of 2018. And I don't know where that is in this budget. So that's why we got to have those conversations. I don't think we need to bring the whole board in. I, I think that's probably part of our mistake, Terry, in the past is it gets too muddy with priorities and things. One board member, we may have a priority, but I think we just need to have a conversation about budget. Uh, we don't need to know. Uh, we've heard their plans and their goals. We know that they've increased the amount of schools that are accredited. We hope that that will continue going up. Um, we just need, I think we need to just talk money um, and, and what those true needs are. I know the budget includes even adding in-school suspension in, um, putting that back in that was cut years ago. But well, we need to find out why is that a priority? Why do you want to put in-school suspension people back into the schools? Is it because you want to reduce the amount of kids that are suspended because that impacts academics? We need to know why is there 1.6 million extra added in the budget for that? Why are they adding teacher assistant positions? Those are things that we don't know unless we had a liaison at the meeting hearing this and bringing it back. I happen to watch the budget announcement and I've read the documents. That we, it would be great to have those real deep conversations with them and maybe understanding maybe the categories would help them um, with that. Maybe they need some direct. I don't know. I don't, maybe they don't want direction from us. But I, I think that we just, we, we all have to work together on this. I think the Lifelong commission, Learning Commission, once we get that going, will help maybe look at some additional resources right, as well. Ms. Gray, you should go to the final word. Okay. Um, one, I'm not necessarily a fan of categorical spending, and the only reason why I'm not is because I don't want the council, per se, to subject to substitute their judgment about what the school board needs when the school board's the, school board's the entity in the governing, body. the governing body of the schools, and their business, if you will, is education. I don't want to... I, I, I have trouble going down that path. And secondly, when you talk about liaison, I brought it up to Marcus. Um, when our other government liaison was here before Michelle, and when she comes back from Richmond, I mean, what else does she do? She could go over to the school board meeting and be there and take notes and prepare a, either a written uh, summary of what happens over there and or do a pop-up presentation at our work session or something about what's going on you know over there in those meetings i mean it's a liaison between uh, one government entity to another one and we fund them right just my thought mr smith all right so to wrap up the retreat so the last thing we said in terms of next steps was you wanted timely communication you're now getting the weekly updates and, the, and the, there's a couple of intents there one is to get you all a sort of a base level of information so if we're going to have substantive conversations, it's important that everybody kind of has the same baseline of, of knowledge on whatever the topic is. It's also intended just so you, you know what went on that week, and if you're racing out to a Civic League meeting or something, you grab the last couple of uh, weekly packets and you got a sense of, of what's, what's happened. Um, and then the articles, and I'm getting some good reaction, I think, from the articles, and they, they, are, they are what they are. If you want to read them, read them. If you don't want to read them, don't read them. But the idea is to try and give you – um, information of, particularly on your main topics and uh, whether with one of the last week I think was on you know public pensions and so it's just interesting I think to see what everybody's dealing with if you all have an article that you think you'd like the rest of the council to have send that to us and we'll, we'll include that um, in the packet we're trying to give you obviously we talked a minute ago about how we'll uh, frame up the topics for uh, the, the council conversations around your focus areas you're going to get the 90 day look ahead and then you've got the, the planning tool that tells you what's happening and then again, we mentioned earlier, trying to give you those constituent concerns, you know, every Friday uh, in that packet. So that's it for the retreat. Um, uh, in terms of um, the next item is loan max. Now, the loan max presentation, there's some conversations, some questions about land use, highest and best use. You've got an item on your uh, agenda next week. George's presentation was is in Dropbox. 
And so we're, we're about 30 minutes behind, which is not a problem. But so I, I, will, I looked for some feedback of, do you want George to jump up and make the presentation, or did you get what you needed looking at the presentation? And I'll obviously defer to counsel. Okay. Okay. I'd like for him to make it. Mr. Riddick? Yeah. Okay. I'd like for him to make it. All right. Mr. Can he do it quickly? <laughs> George, you're quick. While we're adjusting on the calendar on, in September, we have four meetings. And I would propose that we not do the work session which is after Labor Day, because two days will be on the retreat, which would be like a work session. Anybody else notice that? I agree. We never do a meeting after holiday. I know. That's well, because we introduced the first. Uh, yeah. 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 Is there anybody else notice that? We never meet after holiday. So Kimberly pointed it, so we, we can make that change. Bernard, does that require it's the official calendar? The Sorry, we were talking. Oh, okay. I was asking legal opinion. Right. Do we need to amend the count? Can we simply make that change? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that and figure out. We'll make it happen and we'll figure out. <laughs> um, if we take, we're having a, re because the retreat's in September, essentially you've got four meetings. And so the thought is don't have this work session after Labor Day. Um, it has not been advertised. That's a great so point. So, yeah, we can just ditch that and we're good. Yeah. All right. Hi, George. Thank you. Um, so you all asked me, I've, I've talked to you about Loan Max uh, a little over a month now. Um, you all asked me to come back um, and talk about um, highest and best use. Um, just a reminder of where this is. It's on Military Highway. Um, place burned down, um, and they want to, to reestablish it. Um, it's right there at, at um, Norvella. Um, and um, this is the, the, the site plan. Um, you'll notice that, that in this time, the parking is all on the military highway side. Um, so there is a little bit of sheltering of the neighborhood behind it um, that didn't exist in the previous one. So you all asked me to come back and talk to you about the highest and best use. Um, and that's a bit of a problem for planners. Um, highest and best use is a concept that um, real estate appraisers use. It's a concept that um, develop, economic development folks use. Um, it's not a concept that planning use. What we use in planning, we talk about a vision. Um, so I had to reach out to um, the folks in development um, to, to help me with this. So um, these are not necessarily all my words as much as they, they are um, shared among all the staff. So you know, first issue is that <coughs> the um, the Norview Military Intersection, which is just to the south of this, um, is designated in our plans as a gateway intersection. Um, and that's in recognition of its proximity to the airport. Um, and the kinds of uses that we talk about at that kind of a gateway are um, food, convenience retailing, lodging, and automobile rental. All of those are uses that were, are um, clearly you know, articulate uh, to people who are going to and from an airport um, and um, either are um, leaving our city or, or coming to it. Um, a lot of the properties along um, Military Highway, I, I think the consensus is that they are not being used um, to their highest and best use. Um, however, they are being used in, in ways that um, our economic, the, the economy of the area um, is driving a demand for. Um, the fact that there is a demand for something doesn't necessarily make, the, make, make it a good thing, but um, there is a demand for it. Um, and then, you know, just again, we've talked about this several times. Um, it is really hard to change um, the, a, an overall character of an area um, on, a, on a single parcel by parcel basis. Um, so sometimes it, you, you need a more, of a, um, more of an impactful type of, of approach. Um, however, um, one thing that we will notice is that the Priority 4 dealership um, is, um, is taking over the old flea market site, and um, that is precisely the kind of impactful, um, potentially transformative development that could begin uh, the process of, of improving the whole area. Um, this, is, of course, is an entrance to a neighborhood. Um, it's very small, um, a little hard to do a whole lot with a third of an acre. Um, but, um, you know, perhaps, uh, and you'll notice that the other uses there um, that have just recently come all use more um, land than, um, than the third of an acre. Um, I, 
I, before I go back, you know, the, when we come to a, pl a vision, um, you know, so the question is, does a payday loan fit into the vision that we have for um, this corridor? Um, and from a planning perspective, I would argue that it doesn't, um, that um, that's not the kind of use that serves people headed to the airport, and it's not the kind of use um, that um, fits the vision for, for what we, we see. It is, however, I, I admit, a, a legal use um, um, with a, a special exception. So there's six payday loan um, title establishments within a two-mile radius, um, and um, two of them at five points, and then the others uh, up along um, uh, East Little Creek. Um, and if you take a look at the map, the whole city, um, you'll notice that they seem to stretch from you know, they're, they stretch along Little Creek. Um, there's a cluster down in the Military Circle, Janif area, um, and then there's um, a couple in the Five Points area, and then a, a couple a little closer to downtown. So I, that's just intro. If you've got questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I know you're trying to move on, and Ready? I was trying yeah. to move quickly. Uh, maybe... Okay. Be this. Did we have some type of uh, desire of businesses going, knowing that the outlet mall was coming, and uh, and we wanted to to make that corridor attractive uh, as far as that's concerned? And it seems to me that eateries and things of that nature would be uh, more suited, uh, you know, for people going in and out of the outlet mall. Someone was even saying to me in the past that if they ever did the uh, technical school over at Lake Taylor, then um, the, you know that military highway corridor would be uh, better suited for uh, you know restaurants and, and things of that nature. I think about uh, I hate to compare other cities, but I think about uh, Warwick Boulevard over in Newport News, and from um, what is that? one of the main exits going into Christopher Clyde Newport. Morris. Yeah, J. Clyde, Clyde Morris. And going towards the airport. Everything you want is there. Parking hotels areas. and everything. And really, in my mind, that's what I was hoping that we could duplicate. Even if it meant that the city would go in or the, go and, you know, find a developer to come in and, and, uh, and, and put all of those, that land together and come up with good eateries and a, and a couple of very nice hotels. So when people came to the uh, outlet mall, they would, you know, have some options in terms of places to eat and, and places to stay. Uh, and so, and, and as I said earlier, uh, someone was saying if we ever did a technical school over by Lake Taylor, then that would also give us a need uh, to have, you know, nice eateries along Military Highway. And so when I, and that's what I, I think about when I think about that particular uh, corridor. Ms. Johnson? Um, as far as the low max is concerned, I think we need to um, focus on the bigger picture of the future, um, not the immediate uh, gratification, but the future plans. Um, and promoting um, Five Points as the next gateway, and it is, um, leading from the airport to our communities and to downtown. Um, driving through the city, especially on Virginia Beach Boulevard, once you come um, make your way over the Newtown Road, all I see is car lots and loan places for the city of Norfolk. And I think we have more to offer than just car lots on our main gateways to, to our city. Not to say that Lomax is, I consider that they prey on our citizens here in Norfolk, um, as well as Mr. Homewood, given the report, the proximities. <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's worse than the 7-Elevens on every corner, because based on that, yeah, they're just about at every corner. So I think that for the bigger picture for the future. What is the best use, land use, for whatever land we have? We really need to consider 
um, consider that. No matter how um, small it is, you said, Mr. Homewood, it's only 1.3 acres or it's three, a third, one third of an third acre. Third of it, okay. So um, whatever that may be, we could figure out what we could possibly put there that would benefit the overall plans for the city of Norfolk. Right, so and I that think, may require zoning. So I think the type of business requires a special exemption. There are some permitted uses by right. Uh, and one of the things that Mr. Homewood mentioned as a possible highest and best use may be a permitted use by right. We're only, this question is only before us because it requires a special exception. Um, to operate the, the type of business that wants to go back there. Chris Smeagol. Yeah, and just, you know, a, a drive through Dunkin' Donuts could go there that's small enough, or, you know, there's smaller, you know, drive -through. I know, I know, but there's uses that are better, I think, for that. And with the potential of this military highway, I know we talked about HRT earlier, but uh, light rail could potentially be going down military highway. Um, which would really, um, you know, um, make that area more attractive. Um, it is time, you know, this is Little Creek Road and Military Highway are the two corridors that are just so stuck um, back in the 1960s and 70s with these car dealerships and these used car lots, tire sales places, and people are, are, are kind of sick of that, those types of uses. They want to, they want access to things that they're going to use on a daily basis or a weekly basis and um, it is um, I think I was told the reason why because it was all the military traffic all the military guys that would be driving down these roads would want to stop to get their used cars and stuff that's why these all you know popped up but even the military is downsized so um, but anyway there's there is a lot of those in this area but the, with the future of H, uh, light rail maybe going down this corridor um, I think that we have a better use for that site. Right. Mr. Smith? All right, that, that is it for your open. We've got some uh, closed items that we need to run you through, and um, I know you also want to grab dinner. Yes. I move the members of council to assemble them closed meeting. Let's keep this rolling. March 7, 2017 at 5, 5 p.m. for the purposes set out in clauses 3, 7, and 29 of section 2.2-3711 Virginia Freedom of Information Act. That is three, discussion of the disposition of publicly held real property in the Villa Heights, East Ocean View, and military circle areas of the city. Seven, consultation with legal counsel regarding two legal matters. One, the liability for destruction of buildings, and two, exposure under littering ordinances. And 29, discussion of the terms of a public contract involving expenditure of public funds for discussion and open session would adversely affect the negotiating strategy of the public body. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. Vice President. Thank you.